Hello and welcome to our webinar on developing Meta 1.0 products with NF Connect SDK. Before we start, let me quickly go into practicalities. The webinar will be overall about 60 minutes. Questions are highly encouraged. For the questions, use the question function. It is to the top right of your sidebar. All questions there are anonymous. The chat is not anonymous. You're welcome to use the chat and chat to everyone in the webinar. But for the question, for the Q&A in the end, we will have a look at the questions, not the chat. If you have even more questions after the webinar is done, go to DevZone. We have a team of very capable engineers on DevZone helping you with all of your technical questions. And as always, a recording of the webinar will be available later. We will also have that on DevZone and a link here on this page. As well as the on-demand page at webinars.nordicsemi.com. My name is Finn Voetius, I am today's host, and as you can see, I like the NF70 series. More importantly, today's speakers are Camille and Marcin. They are from our R&D department and are heavily involved in developing the Meta standard itself. Thanks a lot for being here today. Let's have a short introduction. Camille? Hi, my name is Camille Kaspertrick and I'm working as a firmware engineer in Nordic Semiconductor. I joined Nordic over two years ago uh, and I've been working on developing Matter protocol uh, and integrating it with uh, NRF Connect SDK from the very beginning uh, of the project start. Hello, my name is Marcin. I've been with Nordic for almost a year now and since the beginning I've been involved in Matter project development. During that time, I've been mainly in charge of Matter over Wi-Fi support for our platform. And today I have a pleasure to be one of your hosts. Thank you. We are very glad you are here. And with that, I think we can get right into it. In case you haven't seen our previous webinars, I highly encourage you to do so, especially when you're not familiar with Matter technology. In the first webinar, our technical product manager, Krzysztof, presented theoretical aspects of matter. In turn, in the second webinar, our two colleagues, Wukasz and Damian, focused more on the practical approach when it comes to development of matter applications with our NRF Connect SDK. In fact, our today's webinar might be regarded as the continuation of this previous presentation. Also, to keep being updated, I kindly invite you to subscribe to our webinar platform at nordicsemi.com slash webinars. Okay, let's jump straight into it. But as a starter, let's have a quick glance at today's meeting agenda. In the first section, I will present the current status of Matter open source project implementation and also say a few words regarding Matter in general. Then I will focus more on the support for Matter in our NRF Connect SDK. And last but not least, I will show you some useful software instrumentation, which might come in handy when it comes to development of Matter applications. Then I will hand it over to Camille, who will show you two demos. In the first one, you will learn a very exciting Matter feature, which is devices binding. In the first point, Camille will uh, show you how to set up the development environment and how to build Matter over thread applications in our SDK. You will also learn how to control accessories from PC and uh, how the light bulb matter device can be controlled by light switch matter device over thread network. Then Camille will guide you through matter multi-fabric scenario so that you can learn how to control accessory from Android driven smartphone and how to add accessory to the new matter fabric. In the last practical section of this webinar, together we will have more hands-on coding experience we will develop uh, a Matter accessory application. I will show you how to configure the data model. Uh, we will define the network topology with, which will be used in our example. Together we will develop the application logic of, of our sample and then we will test the whole setup running over Wi-Fi network. The last section of this webinar uh, will be a Q&A session, so I highly encourage you to ask as many questions as you want. 
At the beginning, I would like to answer a quite important question. Uh, what actually is matter and why it is so vital for the current uh, smart home and IoT industry? So matter from the beginning has been founded as the open source and collaborative initiative, which aims to implement the application layer protocol dedicated for smart home applications. This is the collaborative uh, initiative. So there is a GitHub repository with the open source uh, project implementation, which gathers contributors from all over the world. Also, I'm thrilled to announce that the first official matter 1.0 release has been recently delivered. What does it mean? It simply means that now we have uh, both the official uh, specification of the protocol itself, but also the reference implementation of the matter stack. So by clicking on the uh, first link in this presentation, uh, you can see uh, the official tagged release hosted on the GitHub repository from where you can simply download the um, source code and use it out of the box in your product development. Also, by clicking on the second link in this slide, uh, you will be guided to the official note from the Connectivity Standards Alliance, where you can read more about Matter, what actually it offers, what kind of problems it uh, attempts to solve, like the simplicity, interoperability, reliability, security. Uh, these are things that uh, currently are affecting the existing uh, smart home solutions. Uh, so that's actually why Matter has been founded. Also, a cool thing is that by clicking on this link, you can download the official Matter uh, specification and simply use it in your projects. Okay, now let me focus more on the support for Matter in our NRF Connect SDK. So there, Matter is deployed as one of the uh, Git submodule repositories. We also have a dedicated fork for that. Um, and the reason we have this fork is uh, that we need to uh, provide a synchronization between the Matter open source upstream project and our SDK. Uh, the whole thing is powered by a Zephyr operating system, yet another open source uh, project. And on the right side of this slide, you can see uh, the whole uh, software architecture. Uh, and also you can notice that the user application and the matter stack uh, sits on top of uh, all of these complex software layers which we provide as Nordic. Uh, we also support the certified support for Thread 1.3, which is quite uh, unique because we are uh, apparently the first company to offer uh, this support. And we also offer the Bluetooth Low Energy stacks. Uh, this means, for instance, that you can download the precompiled versions of our Thread libraries, and then you are ensured that you can have uh, the certified Thread product um, in your portfolio. We also offer uh, Matter sample applications in our SDK. These are, amongst other, uh, window covering, uh, log application, and uh, light switch. Um, Yet another uh, cool thing is that with our recent release, which was 2.1.1, uh, we uh, included the official uh, support for Matter 1.0 uh, first release. So this simply means that our uh, SDK uh, includes the uh, version of Matter which is compliant against the specification. Another uh, thing to show off is that our Nordic Weather Station application, which was running on the uh, Thingy 53 DK, has successfully passed the Matter uh, SVE, which stands for Specification Validation Event. This is another um, confirmation that uh, our SDK and our uh, overall solution is conformant against the Matter specification. If you would like to get more info regarding Matter, I encourage you to click the link in this slide and it will guide you to uh, our Nordic Matter documentation, which is quite well written and comprehensive. Uh, so here you can find more uh, info regarding Matter protocol. Uh, we have also some sub pages here. Uh, 
first of them is Matter Overview, in which you can also find the link to our introduction to Matter webinar, and a set of sub-pages, which will guide you through Matter development model, Matter architecture, um, the data model, interaction framing, and overview of the Matter network topologies. So I encourage you to uh, take a glance at these sub-pages, uh, especially if you would like to get more familiar with Matter technology. Uh, this would be uh, especially important in case you are planning to develop your own, own uh, Matter device or end product. And speaking about uh, creating uh, the end product, we also have a, a section in our documentation about that. And it's called how to create Matter end product. And this is the uh, extensive set of documents which will uh, demonstrate how to certify your Matter product. Okay, now I would like to present uh, some Matter development tools which might be used when you are uh, designing your solution. Uh, so first of all, uh, we support variety of hardware uh, SOCs and development kits, which are based on uh, NRF 52, 53, and just recently NRF 70X family, which is a companion chip uh, implementing the uh, Wi-Fi radio. Uh, so all of these platforms and uh, DKs are officially supported when it comes to uh, development of Matter with our SDK. Uh, apart from that, we also provide the uh, extension pack for uh, Visual Studio Code, which is called NRF Connect for Visual Studio. Uh, and this gives you uh, the uh, self-sufficient IDE, which uh, can be used for application development. Uh, we also do support JLink GDB debugging tool. Uh, so this comes in handy when uh, tracing some bugs or simply investigating uh, some errors or, or problems occurring in your application. Um, and uh, also uh, another interesting piece of hardware is uh, Nordic Power Profiler Kit, which can be uh, utilized for uh, power measurements. Um, this board can be easily attached to uh, our DKs, but uh, also your uh, custom solutions. And in conjunction with dedicated software tool, it can uh, simply allow you to uh, power profile your solution. Um, now, when it comes to uh, networking, we uh, offer a threat topology monitor, which can be useful when investigating uh, threat uh, networks. And we also uh, provide a NRF sniffer, both for 15.4 uh, radio and Bluetooth low energy. As far as Matter is concerned, we support pre-compiled Matter controllers for Linux and Android platforms which can be used out of the box in your development process. In case you would like to get more info regarding Matter-specific tools, I highly encourage you to visit our documentation website where you can read more regarding Matter-specific instrumentation. Um, in fact, one of these tools, which is called ZAP tool, will be used later on in this webinar. All right, and with that, uh, I would like to uh, thank you all for attending this uh, introduction part of our webinar. Now we are going to dive into more practical section. This will be related to matter in our NRF Connect SDK. Uh, so I'm handing it over to Camille, who will energize you with the first demo, which is matter devices binding in threat network. So Camille, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Marcin. I would like to start more practical part of this webinar from presenting you uh, how to build and run NRF Connect SDK matter samples for threat and Wi-Fi technologies. Uh, and of course, to verify that uh, created devices this way are able to work together. Before we'll dive in the SDK, let's take a quick look uh, on the topology of the network that we are going to create. To start building matter network in our home, we need to have Wi-Fi access point connected to the internet. The first element supporting Matter in this network is Matter controller uh, connected to the Wi-Fi network. It is typically a device like smartphone, uh, hub or tablet that is used by the user uh, to control smart home accessories. The first accessory we are going to add to this network is Matter light switch. Uh, but this device uses FRET technology instead of Wi-Fi, uh, so it cannot directly communicate with other Matter devices in this network. 
To make it possible to happen, we need to add additional thread border router uh, that will route the traffic between Wi-Fi and thread interfaces. The light switch is going to be able to control the matter light bulb that is also a thread device. The last problem that needs to be addressed uh, before we start is the fact that the light switch device doesn't have any user interface beside of the single button. Uh, so user will not be able to tell the device uh, which light bulb it should control. Matter relationship called binding uh, solves this problem uh, by allowing to configure such connections using the matter controller uh, and to persist them uh, on the device for the future purposes. That said, uh, let's introduce a real example of the devices we will use for this setup. Uh, as a motor controller, we will use a Linux PC with chip tool application. Uh, that is a command line tool uh, developed by the Matter SDK developers. As a thread border router, uh, we are going to use Raspberry Pi 4, uh, running open thread border router service, uh, and using a Nordic NRF 52840 dongle uh, as a thread radio coprocessor. The Matter light switch uh, will be Nordic uh, dual core NRF 5340 development kit uh, running the light switch application. And last but not least, uh, Matter light bulb will be Nordic uh, NRF 52840 development kit. Uh, both NRF 52840 and NRF 5340 kits uh, are capable to uh, communicate over thread and Bluetooth LE protocols in parallel. As we are not going to focus uh, on all parts of this setup, uh, there are a couple of things necessary to prepare uh, to replicate all steps from this webinar. If you don't have them in place, uh, please see the provided links to the official documentation and guides. First, uh, you need to have NRF Connect SDK 2.1.1 uh, installed on your Ubuntu Linux PC. Another required software is NRF command line tools. Uh, that is a package of tools used uh, for programming and debugging Nordic NRF devices. To simplify code development, we recommend to use Visual Studio Code with NRF Connect extension pack for VS Code. And the last important part is preparation of Raspberry Pi and open thread border router uh, that was presented in the previous uh, Developing Matter Products with NRF Connect SDK webinar from the last year. If you haven't watched it yet, um, I encourage you to do that, uh, especially the part starting at 16 minutes and 15 seconds that ex explains uh, how to set up uh, that fretboard router. Okay, uh, now let's start work with SDK uh, from preparing the firmware uh, for our Matter accessories. First thing that I do is opening Visual Studio Code and then click on the NRF Connect for VS code extension icon. I click at application button and select the light bulb sample location on my disk. Then I click add build configuration, make sure that the proper NRF 52840 DK is selected and I'm starting to build this target. While the application is building, you can connect your development kit to the PC uh, and make sure it is visible in the connected devices section. I have here two devices uh, because I have both development kits uh, that we are going to use uh, already plugged in. When the build is done, you should see the build directory for your application. If you don't, you can try to refresh the view using the button. Now we can select our device and click flash action. After that, you can open the terminal and open device serial port using your favorite app. I'm going to use screen command, so I type uh, serial port name and the baud rate. And you can see the logs from uh, Matter light bulb are visible. Now let's repeat the same steps for the Matter light switch. I click add new application and select the light switch sample location on disk. Then I add new build configuration, but this time I change board selection to NRF 5340, 
uh, and I start building the target. Okay, the firmware is ready, uh, so I can select the proper uh, from connected devices uh, and flash firmware to it. Let's open another serial port monitor for the light switch. Uh, please note that NRF5340 has two serial ports available because it has two separate cores. We want to see the logs from the application core, so I need to select the serial port with the bigger number. And, and we can see the light switch device is working too. We have our accessories ready, uh, so it's time to get Matter Controller firmware. You can build chip tool from sources, but it is also possible to download ready package by visiting SDK Connected Home IP repository uh, and clicking on the 2.1.1 release. Uh, and then downloading the proper package for PC, uh, that is chip to Linux x64.zip. Uh, uh, next, let's open uh, another terminal, uh, navigate to the package download location, uh, and let's unzip it. Before we will use the chip tool application to commission the matter light bulb, we need to know the operational data sets uh, of a threat network that we are going to use. To do that, uh, we need to connect to previously configured Raspberry Pi that is running Threadboard router. Uh, I'm going to use SSH uh, for this purpose. Now we can get datasets using the ot-ctl dataset active command, uh, where minus x means that uh, we want to see the output in the hexadecimal format. Uh, let's copy this data uh, to the side and go back to the chip tool terminal. Okay, uh, after that we can start libel commissioning uh, by invoking um, pairing uh, ble thread uh, command. Uh, where the first argument is device node ID, uh, let's say one. Second one are saved thread network datasets. And then we have setup pin code and device discriminator that have uh, some default values. Okay, the commissioning is done, so let's see if we can control the light bulb using chip tool. We can do that using on-off uh, toggle command, uh, followed by the device node ID uh, that we assigned during commissioning and the endpoint for on-off cluster. Let's observe the LED2 of the NRF52 development kit is changing state as it receives the commands. Now I want to commission the matter light switch device, but it doesn't automatically advertise over Bluetooth LE as it was for the light bulb. So I need to start it by pressing button number four. The chip tool command uh, for the commissioning is almost the same uh, as for the light bulb, uh, but this time we need to assign different node ID, let's say two. The commissioning is done, uh, so let's try to read some information from the light switch. For example, we can invoke uh, the basic read uh, vendor ID command. Uh, and we can see the device uh, return some value. Uh, once we are sure the communication between accessories and controller is working, we can move to uh, establishing binding between the accessories. Uh, the chip tool commands for this uh, process are a little bit complex, uh, but you can just copy them from the Nordic Matter Light Switch Guide. 
Uh, first, we need to modify the access control list configuration for the light bulb uh, to allow the light switch control its state. Uh, I need to replace the uh, light switch and light bulb node ID symbols uh, with corresponding two and one uh, values. It's done. Uh, and then we need to configure binding settings for light switch uh, to inform it about the light bulb it should control. So I again need to copy uh, write binding command and again replace the node ID symbols uh, in all places. That's it, uh, the binding should be established. Let's observe the LED2 of the light bulb uh, to see if it will change the state by clicking button two of the light switch. You can see it's working and moreover, I can press the button for a longer time to change the brightness of the light bulb. Now, uh, after we set up the matter testing environment, and we've seen uh, matter over thread communication is working. Uh, let's move to the demonstration of another scenario proving matter interoperability. Uh, we are going to test a multi-fabric feature uh, that allows to join a particular matter device uh, into several different and completely independent matter fabrics. Uh, this way, it is possible to set up in our home a few matter fabrics created by different ecosystem providers uh, and then to control uh, the same matter accessory uh, through all of them. Some part of the network topology will be the same uh, as for the previous demo. Uh, so I need a Wi-Fi access point with internet access and also fretboard router. This time, we are going to use Android smartphone with chip tool application, uh, working as a matter controller. The matter accessory uh, will be weather station application running on Nordic uh, Fingy 53 sensor kit. Beside of the Android controller, uh, we are going to also join another matter controller to the network. Uh, that is chip tool application running on Linux PC uh, that we already know uh, from the previous demo. Those two controllers uh, will create separate uh, matter fabrics, uh, just like in the case of two different ecosystem providers uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, we will prove uh, that the communication with uh, the weather station will be possible from both fabrics. Okay, uh, let's start testing from uh, building the firmware for matter weather station. Again, I'm opening Visual Studio Code and in the NRF Connect extension, I click add new application and select Matter Weather Station uh, location on disk. Next, I click Add Build Configuration and start building the target. Uh, we don't need to verify the selected board this time as uh, this application is supported only for Fingy53 sensor kit. Uh, please note that Fingy53 board uh, doesn't have inbuilt Jlink programmer, uh, so you need external programmer connected to it using uh, SWD cable. For example, you can use another NRF5340 uh, Nordic development kit for this purpose. Uh, it is also useful uh, to connect the thingy uh, to the computer using USB-C cable uh, to be able to uh, gather logs from the device. Once the build is complete, uh, we can select the connected device uh, and flash firmware to it. After programming is done, uh, we can open the Thingy serial port uh, using serial port monitor and see the logs from the device. Uh, Let's scroll up a little bit to find URL link to the web page uh, that we can use to print QR code containing uh, device onboarding information. 
that will be necessary uh, for the commissioner to be able to commission the device. Uh, you can also see that Thingy uh, is blinking LED shortly on blue, uh, what means it is advertising over uh, Bluetooth LE. Uh, now we need to get the commissioner firmware, uh, that is Android chip tool application. Uh, similarly to chip tool for Linux, we can build uh, it from sources or download uh, the package from NRF Connect SDK tag. I'm going to, I'm going to download the package uh, on my Android smartphone, so I'm navigating to the uh, 2.1.1 tag uh, and select the proper dot uh, apk file uh, you need to select uh, 64 bits architecture or arm v7 uh, depending on your uh, smartphone architecture uh, let's speed up a little bit the download process Next, uh, let's install the application. Okay, and let's open it. Uh, we have both uh, Matter devices uh, ready to work, so now I can start the commissioning. Uh, I click uh, Provision Chip Device with Thread button and scan QR code uh, on the web page. You can customize thread network credentials, but I would like to keep them default, so I'm pressing Save Network button. Uh, the commissioning started. Uh, what you can see as Thingy started to blink uh, with LED rapidly. Changing the color to violet uh, means that the commissioning was completed. And now you can go uh, to Sensors Clusters section uh, and try to read the temperature from the weather station. It says uh, it is 24.84 Celsius degrees. Uh, you can also change the measured attribute using the list uh, and then also change the endpoint number that, for example, for relative humidity, endpoint is uh, equal to. Okay, uh, now let's try to test a multi fabric feature. So we are going to need Chip Tool for Linux application uh, as a commissioner for the second fabric. Uh, we downloaded the app uh, in the previous demo, so let's not repeat those steps uh, and just open it. And now we need to navigate to the uh, multi-admin cluster section. Uh, then we can select the node ID uh, and pin code for the second fabric. Let's say uh, 20, 20, 20 and 29. And press Enhanced Commissioning Method button uh, to open pairing window for second chip tool. Uh, now we can commission the device using a uh, chip tool uh, pairing uh, on network command and inserting selected node ID uh, and the pin code. Okay, commissioning is done. Uh, so we can uh, try read temperature uh, value from the weather station using the chip tool. Uh, temperature measurement uh, read command, uh, followed by node ID uh, and endpoint ID. Uh, oops, uh, um, I forgot uh, to add uh, measured value uh, attribute name. Uh, and we can see it worked. The value uh, represents 24.91 Celsius degrees. Uh, so now we are sure that uh, weather station device belongs to, uh, to the two independent uh, matter fabrics. Uh, that's all for this demo. Uh, so now I'm just going to hand over back to Martin. Uh, that is going to uh, present you so very interesting uh, coding work. Okay, thank you, Camille. Uh, so now let's uh, let's start the last part of our practical uh, section of this webinar. Uh, in this uh, demo, we will implement uh, a matter accessory, but don't worry, we are not going to do it from the scratch. Instead, we will use uh, one of our Nordic uh, matter applications, which uh, reside in our SDK. The name of the application is template, and as the name might suggest, it will just uh, constitute a skeleton for our uh, application, which we are going to develop. Uh, 
but to do so, we first need to configure the data model and uh, we will do it with the uh, dedicated tool. But uh, first, let's have a quick overview of what actually this data model is. Uh, so uh, to implement a particular device, uh, Matter uh, offers the uh, abstraction uh, model, which allows you to uh, configure a particular uh, abstract uh, endpoints uh, and clusters within these endpoints. So this is a kind of hierarchical structure. Um, again, each cluster might co might uh, contain attributes, uh, events, and commands, which might be run on this particular cluster. So all of this is needed to uh, model uh, the behavior of a real appliances and real matter devices. Um, if you would like to get more insight on um, matter data model, again, you can click on the link in this slide and it will guide you to uh, our documentation where you can read more about uh, matter data model and matter device types. Um, the uh, accessory which we are going to implement uh, is uh, called um, generic switch. Uh, and uh, here I have opened uh, the uh, matter uh, specification of the first release. And in the section 6.6, .6, you can see that the generic switch device is described. And here you can uh, see the basic information regarding this type of device. Uh, the most important thing is uh, cluster requirements. So this section defines the clusters which are uh, mandatory uh, for this uh, kind of device to be conformant with matter specification. So essentially, uh, we will transform our uh, template application into a um, generic switch by implementing these two particular clusters. As I said, uh, to uh, configure our data model, we are going to use uh, the ZAP tool. Uh, so this is the tool uh, supported by uh, Matter, uh, Matter project. Uh, this is also hosted on GitHub and it's also deployed within uh, Matter project itself. Um, and it will uh, allow us to uh, use the GUI interface to configure our clusters and then generate the necessary uh, CPP source files which will be included in our project and then compiled together with our application files. Um, now let's have a quick overview of our network topology. Uh, it's going to be quite simple because all we need is actually a Wi-Fi router or access point um, uh, with connection to the internet and the Linux PC with chip tool installed, which is in fact the implementation of Matter Controller, which has been already used during today's webinar. And uh, our application will be uh, run on one of our recent DKs, which is NRF7002 uh, DK. Uh, it includes the uh, host processor, which is NRF53. Uh, and as a companion chip, it also includes our a recent SOC, which is uh, NRF uh, 7002. Okay, now let's uh, do the practical part of this uh, demo and write some code. Okay, so let me open the Visual Studio Code application with Nordic extension pack already installed and simply create a new application based on the existing one. Uh, which is going to be the Matter template application. You can also see the documentation popping up on the right side of this view. I'm also uh, selecting the name of our application, which is going to be Switch. And I also need to add a new build configuration. Therefore, I'm choosing the proper uh, DK on which is going to be running and pressing the build configuration, which will run the first uh, build and compilation of our project. Depending on the host architecture and applications running in the background, uh, the whole compilation process might take more or less time. Okay, we are ready to go. Now I need to check out the proper revision of the ZEP tool, which will be used later on to configure our data model. Uh, so I'm just using the git checkout command with the proper commit hash ID. Uh, and I also need to stage uh, these changes in Matter SDK so that they are not overwritten by run, run uh, ZAP tool script. 
Um, this script accepts the argument which is uh, simply the JSON file containing uh, the definition of our data model. So I need to pass uh, this the path to this uh, file together with the run ZAP tool.sh. Note that the workaround with checking out the proper ZAP tool revision will not be necessary for the next release of our SDK. Okay, uh, here you can see the ZAP tool GUI and the first pre-configured endpoint uh, based on our uh, data model definition file. So now we are adding a new endpoint which will implement the matter generic uh, switch type of device. You can see the uh, mandatory clusters already enabled. One of them is identify, which will be implemented later on in our application. And of course, the switch cluster, which is essential for our application. So now let's save this file and close the ZAP tool. And let's generate the data model source files based on the uh, JSON file, which we have already edited. So for that, I am using the generate.py uh, script, which is also the part of Matter SDK. And I also uh, need to pass the path to the uh, pre-configured file, which defines our data model. Okay, once the data model files are generated, we can do the coding. Uh, first of all, I need two aliases for the button 2 on our DK, which uh, is going to be used to control our matter switch. The first alias uh, simply indicates the button number and the second one uh, is the mask for this button. Uh, I also need to ask to uh, add two new uh, event types for the identify uh, matter cluster. Uh, these are needed uh, simply because our application is based on the event queue, so these events uh, are needed to implement the logic related to identify cluster. Now let's edit the uh, app task uh, header file. First, I need to add uh, a new include, which uh, uh, simply contains the definition of the identify uh, server API. Um, and now let's uh, add uh, uh, an identify uh, object to our class. Uh, it will be instantiated later on. I also need three uh, handler methods. Uh, the first one uh, is the control switch handler, which uh, is needed to uh, implement the logic related to pressing and releasing of the button on our DK and uh, two another methods uh, for the identify feature. The first one uh, is the identify start handler, which will be called when the identify uh, feature is uh, issued. And the second one will be simply called when the identify uh, is finished. Uh, all of these methods uh, must follow the particular signature because they are simply callbacks which are going to be used either by the application or the matter stack. Now let's uh, modify the app task CPP file. First of all, I need yet another uh, header file, which will allow us to uh, manipulate the attributes residing on uh, our clusters. It's called accessors.h. And I also need two constants. Uh, the first one uh, will be simply the alias for the ID of our endpoint on which the matter switch device is implemented. So it's going to be equal to one. And I also need uh, a constant which will be used by the blinking procedure uh, of our identify feature because we are going to use the LAD to simply identify our matter device. And I will set this uh, constant to uh, 500 milliseconds. And once this is ready, we can implement the methods which were uh, declared beforehand. So let's start with a control switch handler. It's going to accept uh, application uh, event. And based on that event, it will judge which particular value 0 or 1 should be set on the uh, switch current position attribute. So let's write the first uh, condition. So uh, we will use the uh, button event action. 
and if it's uh, equal to uh, application uh, event type uh, button press, we will simply set the new position uh, temporary variable to one. Now let's simply copy this uh, condition and modify it so that it handles uh, the opposite scenario when uh, the button is actually released. And in this case, we are setting the new position to zero. Uh, all we need to do now is to uh, schedule uh, the uh, setting of our new uh, attribute value. Uh, so we are using uh, the device layer and system layer implementation of uh, uh, schedule lambda method which accepts the uh, callable which will be simply uh, called uh, in the event queue we are capturing the new position variable and uh, utilizing the cluster attribute switch uh, api which allows us to set uh, the new uh, current position value uh, on the switch cluster and we also need to provide the generic switch endpoint ID together with the new position. Now let's implement the identify uh, handler methods. Uh, first, let, let's focus on the identify start handler. Uh, it's going to accept the identify pointer, however, in that it will not be used in the body of this function. Uh, so we are creating a temporary app event object and we are setting its type to identify start. We also need to uh, register a handler which will be uh, called in case uh, this event is dispatched. Uh, so once again, we are using uh, the Lambda semantics for that. Uh, and in the body of this uh, Lambda, we will simply issue uh, the blinking procedure on the LAD. We are reusing the factory reset LAD uh, because uh, it's not used for anything else than uh, uh, turning on and off in case the factory reset is being uh, issued. And last thing we need to do is to post uh, the event in the uh, event queue of our application. Now let's copy uh, the method and simply uh, modify it slightly to match the needs of identify stop handler. So we are uh, changing the application event type to identify stop and modifying the body of the Lambda so that it simply uh, turns the let off when the identify procedure is stopped. Now let's uh, instantiate the identify uh, static uh, object, which uh, has been declared previously in our header file. Uh, in its constructor, it's, it accepts the uh, ID of the endpoint on which it is implemented. And two callbacks. Uh, first one is uh, the start identify. A handler which we have already uh, implemented and the second one is the identify stop handler which is also implemented and we also need to provide uh, the id uh, of the particular uh, handling of the identify uh, which in our case is simply visible lad Okay, the one last change uh, which we need to perform in our application is to extend the existing button event handler uh, so that it supports uh, the button to uh, actions. Uh, so I have copied the existing uh, piece of code and simply I'm I am adapting it to the uh, button switch aliases. Uh, and uh, one last thing I need to do is to uh, register the proper uh, handler for this event, which is control uh, switch event. And with that, we are ready to uh, build our final application. So I'm clicking the uh, build pristine option. And again, let's wait for the building process to uh, complete.
once the build is done, we can uh, just turn on our DK uh, and then it appears in the connected devices section in Visual Studio Code. And uh, we can click the flash to simply uh, upload the application image into our DK. Okay, we are ready to test our accessory with the usage of the chip tool, which is a reference implementation of Matter controller. Uh, I have a chip tool already installed uh, in my Matter repository uh, and uh, I am starting it in the interactive mode. Uh, we need to now commission our device into Matter network running over Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm choosing the uh, node ID 1 and then I'm passing the credentials and uh, Matter specific descriptors to our command. We can also uh, observe uh, the logs which are appearing in the UART console of our device. Okay, the commissioning has been successful. Uh, now let's play around with the data model. First, I would like to check the identify feature. Hence, I am using the identify command implemented on identify cluster and issuing the device identify for 10 seconds. You can see that the uh, LED is blinking for 10 straight seconds on our DK. Now let's test the matter subscribe mechanism. Uh, I am calling the subscribe command on switch cluster and I want to subscribe to the current position attribute changes uh, with the max interval equal to 10 seconds. As you might have, might have observed, the chip tool prints out the help hints each time I pass the non-complete command. Now you can see that whenever I press and release uh, the button 2 on our DK, the corresponding event is printed on the chip tool console. Please note that the chip tool is a reference developer tool and each smart home ecosystem provider usually has proprietary controller available for customers. That looks really good, thank you. And with that, let's get right into our Q&A. And for the first question, I think I'll just start. Uh, we got a question about the relationship between Meta and HomeKit and whether our NDA allows us to talk about it. <laughs> um, so we can talk about what's publicly available. Uh, I can tell you we have a demo that uh, is running Meta over Thread using a HomeKit Mini. The same thing should be true using an Apple TV. Uh, so your home kit ecosystem will be able to access meta devices if you use one of the thread capable Apple devices. Uh, but the same as with uh, most of the ecosystems, there will most certainly always be features that are spe specific to that ecosystem, right? So meta is quite new and not everything that has been implemented in home kit will be immediately be implemented in meta. Okay. Um, then I think we can go on with uh, Camille. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so for the question, um, uh, is matter frequency diverse? Uh, is the whole network on the one frequency or uh, can matter change the transmis transmission frequency? Uh, so um, actually the matter is application layer protocol. Uh, and from this layer perspective, it doesn't really matter uh, what technology is used uh, underneath. Um, so we may have like mixed Wi-Fi, thread, and Ethernet technologies in one matter fabric. Uh, and from the matter extraction uh, perspective, it doesn't make a difference. Um, so to sum up, I would say matter um, in matter there isn't anything like matter frequency. And uh, but yeah, it's of course possible to use different frequency channels for underneath technologies like Wi-Fi or FRED. Uh, and all you need to do is make sure that those channels were aligned on all devices um, in the network. And such information needs to be sent uh, using the Matter uh, network commissioning cluster. And I believe also a little bit the question, what is a good distance between routers uh, is related to uh, to that topic. So uh, so again, uh, it's it's not like uh, it's a mother specific question. It's more um, it more depends on the on the reliability of the Wi-Fi or, or threat uh, solution that is working underneath. Okay, 
Uh, I think the next one is for Martin. Okay, so regarding uh, any problems with the documentation download, so personally, uh, I have not faced uh, any issues, but we are using our uh, Nordic uh, domain for that. So there might be some problems with, uh, in case you are using uh, any, uh, any private email domain. But first of all, please check uh, the uh, junk folder because uh, one of our colleagues received uh, the documentation in this uh, junk folder of his, uh, yeah. So, but in case uh, there are still any more problems, I think we should just uh, contact the CSA for that. Okay, I think we can just uh, go through the questions. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, are there any plans uh, for supporting the thread topology monitor for Apple macOS? So, there are no uh, such plans, uh, but as far as I, as, as I know, uh, there might be some work ongoing uh, regarding the standardization of the whole, uh, let's say, network and diagnostics uh, of, uh, sorry, diagnostics and monitoring of, of uh, thread uh, topologies. So, uh, yeah, let's let's just wait for that. Uh, and then why are we using Raspberry Pi? Uh, because this is simply the development environment and the ecosystem providers uh, usually uh, do not have uh, the official releases which support Smart. They are, they are, they are uh, more like the early access programs, uh, so it's not like officially available for, for all uh, customers yet. Uh, so that's the reason. And then regarding the network topology, which seems to be quite loaded with devices. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is like uh, not really the matter concern because it's like a networking technology agnostic layer, uh, but it really do support a thread, which is really dedicated for such a low power networking. And it also supports, supports uh, sleepy end devices. Uh, but uh, yeah, this really depends on the particular application, because let's say if someone wants to use the Wi-Fi streaming for anything in the uh, smart home network, then of course it will be more congested and saturated with data packets. But uh, yeah, really the thread is dedicated for a low power operation. So it's not like the matter uh, forces anyone to, uh, to, to do more uh, complex stuff on the network. Okay, I think I will pass to Camille now. Uh, okay, uh, so for the next question, uh, how uh, how about integration uh, of Nordic-based uh, Matter devices into other ecosystems like Google Home? Uh, so, uh, and uh, is there any documentation that explains it? So, um, officially, Google didn't re didn't release um, Matter support in their products yet. Uh, the, their solution can be tested by joining uh, a program called uh, Google Early Access Program, Google EAP. Uh, we are members of this program and we, we test this solution. So if you would like to, uh, to do that too, you need to join this program. Uh, and also Google hosts uh, documentation describing on how to, how to join the program and how to test the devices uh, also for the NRF Connect platform. So, so yeah, you, you just need to, uh, to to search for for the information about Google Early Access Program in Matter, uh, and all all uh, information are there. And for the next question, so uh, what happens if multiple devices uh, are advertising at the same time? Uh, uh, when I want to use chip tool for commissioning, so uh, so I assume the problem you could observe is that the, by default, often example applications use the same uh, the same test discriminator value uh, that is equal to um, three thousand eight hundred forty, uh, and this discriminator should be unique uh, for the particular device, and based on that, commissioner is able to differentiate um, particular advertisements uh, of the devices. So uh, using the chip tool, you need to just pass this discriminator argument. Uh, so what you could use uh, to solve the problem is just set uh, the unique discriminator value for, for every device. Uh, for example, using the kconfig symbol uh, called um, um, config chip device discriminator, I guess, and, uh, and then just rebuild the, uh, the application. Uh, okay, so I will take another one. Uh, why use Matter over other 
application communication protocols. And I think it's really also connected with uh, the uh, other question, which is what are advantages of Matter compared to MQTT? Uh, so basically uh, what Matter uh, is providing is uh, first of all, flexibility. So the customer can customize the setup with mixed uh, thread and Wi-Fi devices, depending on particular application. And it's also, uh, and it also supports uh, the proven uh, data model, which uh, really abstracts the appliances in a smart home ecosystems. And it's also dedicated for uh, ecosystem um, interoperability. Uh, so the MQTT is more like the, the simple uh, application protocol and Matter is more dedicated for communication within ecosystems. And with the usage of thread board, border router, it also facilitates uh, thread uh, Wi-Fi cross communication, which is really cool. OK. Uh, I think I can take another one. Uh, so the somebody asked about the comparison between an ocean and Meta, uh, because Meta seems to have quite an overhead uh, for power constraint devices. And uh, you would like a comment? Uh, yeah. So the the use case isn't exactly the same, right? An ocean is mostly used for, or at least I know it mostly from. Uh, like uh, energy harvesting light switches. So you have like some sort of piezo crystal and you slam into that, get a bit of voltage and send out a tiny signal that basically turns the light bulb on or off. And uh, for Meta, you also like, you have a lot bigger overhead that you need to do, right? You need to be able to do device firmware update. And when you send something like uh, a request to switch on a light, you want to get a message back that it has been received. So there's more happening in Meta. But uh, that being said, I assume at some point somebody's going to uh, build some sort of a gateway anyways between an ocean switches uh, and a meta network. So that's not out of the question. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> OK, uh, so I can take uh, the next one. Uh, what do you mean with fabric? Uh, in essence, a device with, uh, with a chip controller on it. So um, basically a fabric, uh, according to Matter spec, is a, a like collection of Matter devices uh, that, that share the same root of trust. So, uh, so I would say Matter is a term like, like a network with some specific uh, unique identifier and, and unique operational data sets uh, shared by all devices um, in, this, uh, in this network, like, uh, like certificates, uh, uh, also a, a custom, um, a, a unique node identifiers for this particular uh, fabric uh, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> okay, Camille, uh, would you like to take another one regarding uh, iOS application as well? Okay, uh, sure. So uh, there are two questions quite similar. So is there also an, uh, an app for iOS, uh, at least planned? And can I test light bulb example in Home App uh, on iOS or Google Home App? Um, so uh, I'm not sure if the question is about iOS app for the Matter controller. Uh, if yes, uh, there is Apple Home App that currently officially support, uh, supports Matter from, uh, I believe, iOS uh, 16.1 uh, system release. So, so that's, uh, that's officially supported. Um, and uh, so, so the, the answer for another question is, um, sounds yes, uh, you, can test, uh, uh, you can test the light bulb example uh, with a home app. Uh, if it comes to Google, as I said, uh, as I said before, Google didn't release officially uh, uh, support for Matter yet, uh, but you can still, uh, as I said, join uh, Google Access, uh, Google Early Access Program, and test uh, test uh, the light bulb example uh, within uh, within this uh, this program. Okay, so <clears throat> now regarding uh, device firmware up update on Matter, uh, so Matter really provides uh, the uh, dedicated uh, solution for that, which is Matter over the air firmware update. And this is uh, described well in the Matter specification. 
Uh, however, uh, you can also use some proprietary protocols, like for instance, in our in our samples, we are providing the support for uh, BLE SMP. Uh, so it really helps also to have uh, like another solution for downloading the firmware update. However, the, the preferred way to uh, do the firmware update in Matter Networks is to simply use this uh, dedicated uh, protocol for that because it's really, uh, it really provides all the safe mechanisms embedded in Matter. Um, then, uh, is it also possible to introduce custom clusters or would this uh, be like the general concept for Matter? Uh, yes, uh, some uh, customized clusters can be introduced in, in your devices. However, if they are not pr uh, part of the matter specification, they cannot be simply uh, certified. So uh, the customer can have like the matter device, but without this particular cl cluster being certified. Okay, uh, I can take the next one uh, as I believe it is related to the demonstrated uh, setup so uh, is the thread based light switch uh, a sleepy and device uh, so the answer is yes um, presented in the demo devices so uh, so the light switch was a uh, thread sleepy and device and the light bulb was a thread, uh, thread full thread device uh, and also a router in this network Okay, so can we uh, not connect Matter Note to chip tool on Android phone uh, via BLE instead of Wi-Fi router? Uh, so the, the BLE is used here only for commissioning, and this is uh, currently the only supported method. However, there are plans uh, in Matter community to support also uh, other methods for the commissioning. And then uh, the underlying uh, networking technology like uh, Wi-Fi or Thread are just used for the IP connectivity. So the BLE uh, is like the only, the first part of the whole commissioning process. Okay, so another question, uh, is there a chip tool for, for Windows or will it be uh, implemented? So currently there isn't. Uh, Current implementation of uh, chip tool uh, is only uh, working for Linux and uh, and the Mac OS. Uh, basically, uh, that's because uh, it uses uh, Blue Z stack uh, to realize uh, Bluetooth LE communication. Uh, there wasn't plans to port it uh, for Windows, uh, as far as I know. Uh, but honestly, I'm not sure how how availability to Bluetooth stack uh, looks on Windows, uh, but uh, but I guess uh, it is much harder than for Linux. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that's uh, generally just a tool for developers and no one requested such uh, such port so far. So, so I guess uh, it would need to be like developers initiative to create, create uh, such, uh, such implementation in the future. Okay, and then I think there's uh, two more questions for me. So uh, one of them is uh, regarding the NF 7002 DK uh, and the availability. Uh, so right now we have a couple. Uh, <laughs> so we we are uh, we are sampling our customers. So everybody who is uh, going to start their or is going into production uh, early next year, they already got their first development kit. Those are preview development kits, so it's not the final version yet. Uh, if you need one, the best way is always to contact your sales. They will be able to get you one. They aren't officially available yet. That's going to happen early next year. Uh, for reference, the 7002 DK was the uh, development with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Thread on it. It's for the uh, Wi-Fi companion AC that we are going to bring out next year. Um, then the next question, uh, where can we find the HomeKit Meta over Thread demo uh, that you mentioned? Uh, the short answer is you can't, uh, mostly because um, to be able to develop for HomeKit, you need the uh, made uh, the MFI license from Apple. But if you have that, we should be able to uh, give you the sample, I assume. But you need to be an uh, MFI member. Maybe we can do like one or two more questions because we, we are already <laughs> a lot over time. But uh, I think we, we can take one or more. One or two more. Uh, yeah. So, uh, is there a possibility to create a network of devices by using only an Android controller? Well, Android controller is uh, just uh, a matter controller. 
which, uh, as the name might, might suggest, simply controls uh, the uh, and administrates the matter devices. So still, uh, there is uh, <clears throat> either an access point needed for pure Wi-Fi networks or a thread border router in case uh, you are using um, the thread solely or the combination of Wi-Fi and thread. So without that, it's not really possible to create a useful uh, matter network. And then uh, regarding the matter controller, um, so it's it's really like the open source code for that controller, which resides in the matter examples. So it can be easily ported to other platforms in case they are, they are of course providing the necessary networking capabilities. Yeah, so that's I guess uh, would be the short answer for that. Okay, uh, I think I'll do two more just because uh, I know the answer off my head. Um, so the first one is, uh, why do I not see uh, Blue Crystal Energy on the uh, homepage of the CSA? Uh, the answer is probably, it, I assume it's there somewhere, uh, but it's uh, not always mentioned because for transport you're using uh, Thread or Wi-Fi when it's wireless. And Blue Crystal E is uh, only used for secure commissioning, so it's not used for transport. Okay, um, so we have uh, some questions left uh, from the webinar we did earlier this morning or earlier today, depending on where in the world you are. So we'll uh, start off with them. Uh, and as you know, the recording of this webinar will always be available later on this page. Uh, so there we'll include the Q&A of both sessions together. And with that, I think we can start with uh, Camille. Okay, uh, so I can cover uh, first uh, several of them. So the first question uh, from the previous session uh, that we didn't cover was, uh, is it possible for a device or hub uh, that supports only cellular uh, connectivity to act as a um, matter controller, controller plus uh, thread border router? Uh, so I think it's not uh, because uh, current matter implementation doesn't support uh, any cellular uh, technology as a network layer uh, for now. So um, matter controller implementation would not be able to handle uh, the network traffic. Uh, yeah, but but uh, maybe the cellular uh, the cellular is, is some potential direction um, for the future uh, where matter project um, could extend uh, its support. Uh, another question is, uh, which standard Bluetooth profiles uh, are used for Matter over uh, BLE? So um, Matter uses protocol called uh, BTP, uh, and there is specific Matter uh, GAT profile uh, used for Matter uh, Bluetooth LE service. Uh, and we also have like three Bluetooth characteristics uh, called C1, C2, and C3. Uh, and those are related to read write operations and um, and additional commissioning uh, information. Uh, and also another question uh, was, uh, will you stick to matter uh, 1.0 for now, or do you plan uh, intermediate releases with latest matter development until uh, matter 1.1 is there? Uh, so it is not quite decided yet. Uh, we would like to stick uh, to matter releases uh, in the future and also now as much uh, as uh, it's possible. Uh, but matter stack still changes quite fast. Uh, and in case there will be uh, some important features uh, introduced in the matter upstream uh, and we will want to utilize it in NRF Contact SDK, we will upmerge um, the particular commit uh, to our uh, SDK anyway. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess now I can answer some uh, questions as well. Uh, so first of them was, uh, what would be the memory footprint for matter controller with thread border router? Uh, so actually, uh, we do not know. So we uh, have not made such a measurements. But if this is something required by our customers, we will try to provide uh, such measurements, of course. Uh, then, uh, yet another question, would it be possible to create a matter network in Windows in the future? Um, so actually, uh, we do not support, uh, first of all, the chip tool 
or any kind of uh, matter controller implementation running on the Windows. Uh, despite, we do provide um, uh, the support for Windows for our applications, meaning that they can be built uh, on the Windows platform. Uh, however, uh, to create a matter network, it would be uh, essential to have a matter controller uh, running on Windows. So this is something which uh, would need to be ported on this platform. Uh, another question, uh, can we uh, use uh, ZCL tool via VSL? Uh, by ZCL2, I, I probably uh, it seems that it's uh, it seems to be the ZAP tool, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, okay. Um, and uh, actually, we do not provide such a support, uh, but it should be uh, possible considering that uh, the uh, that the uh, yeah, this is like uh, again uh, porting something which is the open source software into. Uh, yet another platform, so that should be totally viable. Um, then there was a question regarding uh, ecosystems. Uh, for instance, uh, how can we integrate device with Alexa Eco? Uh, or can you elaborate how the smart home ecosystem, such as Google Home, interfaces to matter? Um, so um, in case this ecosystem supports matter, uh, it simply will need to be compatible with Matter, so the accessories should simply uh, work out of the box and be able to communicate uh, with these ecosystems. Um, and to uh, uh, answer this question more uh, thoroughly, uh, yeah, if the Google system supports Matter as well, uh, it needs the, the Matter controller also implemented uh, to commission devices to the Matter network. Uh, like there is no uh, official bridge between between ecosystems which are already in the field, um, and they will simply need to be updated by a device firmware upgrade to the firmware revision which uh, supports Matter to be able to talk to other uh, Matter devices. Um, okay, Kamil, can you take uh, another one regarding the free R2S? Can Matter run uh, alongside with Bluetooth LE on NRF52840 simultaneously? Uh, so uh, the question, uh, the answer is uh, yeah. So it is possible to do. For example, we support some uh, some optional feature that is uh, device firmware upgrade over Bluetooth uh, LE. Uh, that takes place in parallel with with matter working. So, uh, yeah, it's possible. However, it would require some some development work to add uh, new Bluetooth uh, service uh, alongside matter. And another question was, uh, can we build matter with uh, with free r 2 s So uh, the answer is no. Uh, not using NRF Connect platform uh, because uh, because Nordic platform is based on Zephyr r 2 s uh, but there are another platforms in Matter that uh, that likely use free R2S. Uh, so to sum up, uh, if it comes to Nordic dancers, no, uh, we cannot do that. Okay. Um, then let's check. Uh, so we have more questions. Uh, are the presentation slides available for download? Yes, the presentation slides as well as the recording will be available for download later. It's going to be on, on this same page, but uh, if you signed up with your email, you'll also get a mail telling you where the slides are. You can expect that uh, probably tomorrow at the very latest, it's going to be uh, early on Friday. Okay, I can take another question. Uh, will you be adding the thermostat sample uh, that is uh, in the matter repository? Uh, so, um, we don't have such plans for now, uh, as uh, there wasn't such requests uh, from our customers so far. Uh, we have currently like five samples and uh, one weather station application in NRF Connect SDK. Uh, so the maintenance of samples causes us some effort. So uh, I would say no until we will not get uh, clear signals that uh, that is something our customers want. Um, and please note that the Matter Weather Station application uh, implements. Uh, for example, temperature measurement cluster uh, that is kind of related uh, some way to thermostat uh, 
measurements. So if you would be interested in taking uh, a look, uh, that might be uh, might be kind of hand. Uh, okay, another question is regarding ecosystems. Uh, are there any plans for Amazon Alexa, Google Home, smart speakers to be the thread border routers in Matter Network? Um, and it's uh, quite related with uh, another question, which is, is there any router supporting directly thread or do you always need to uh, need some extra routers such as Raspberry Pi to handle it? Um, so uh, assuming that these ecosystems uh, support Matter, uh, because I guess uh, it's not uh, officially announced. Uh, that should be the case. Uh, I mean, uh, in case the, the device supports uh, the uh, 15.4 radio and Wi-Fi interfaces, it should be capable to uh, to support uh, being a thread border router and a matter controller, like in one device, in one standalone device. Uh, so in short, uh, it's not really uh, necessary to have like the separate standalone device which works as the uh, uh, thread border router and another one as a matter controller. It can be, it should be possible to build like one uh, standalone device which supports both features. And then there is a question regarding uh, data set. Uh, Camille, can, can you elaborate a bit? Uh, okay, so uh, how uh, it uh, the question is how would I get uh, the data set if I'm using uh, another border router, for example, an Apple TV? Um, so it ca actually depends on the border router used. So it's hard to compare uh, the market uh, products uh, with with border router on Raspberry, Raspberry Pi as uh, this is uh, this is development uh, environment and development solution. Uh, while the market products like Apple TV doesn't provide um, debugging interfaces uh, usually. So in this specific case, Apple TV also uh, implements uh, matter controller functionality. So the data sets uh, from Fred Border Router are passed to controller like, uh, like internally and user doesn't need to know it. Uh, so uh, yeah, and if you would, uh, you, if you would use, for example, some other a market border router like Google Nest Hub, uh, possibly you would be able to connect like uh, over the ADB uh, to the Android system to uh, to download those uh, those data sets uh, of the Thread network. But but for the for the Apple solution, I don't uh, I don't know the way uh, to do that. And another question is uh, for a device like NRF 5340. Uh, will it be able to uh, be in a matter network and communicate with AND plus devices simultaneously? Uh, yeah, so so currently our radio multi-protocol solution that we use for NR5340 uh, network core doesn't support such such uh, such solution. Uh, and uh, we do support simultaneous communication over 15.4 radio, uh, for example, FRET, uh, and uh, over Bluetooth LE. Uh, but not for and uh, and plus. Uh, so from the from the hardware perspective, it should be possible, in theory. Uh, but we don't have, uh, like I said, um, drivers supporting it uh, for now. And uh, also, I'm not aware of any investigations uh, done on this topic. Uh, okay, we also have a question. Uh, thinking of battery-driven devices, uh, what's to expect in terms of power consumption? Example with the lightning up over thread. Uh, so depending on the particular application and particular device, uh, we can use uh, the thread device as the sleepy end device or the uh, like the uh, device which is constantly powered to the mains. And in our samples, uh, the uh, lightning up itself uh, it can be regarded as the device which is supposed to be powered because this is like the light bulb essentially and uh, the the light switch uh, uh, sample supports the sleepy end device configuration which sim simply allows it to sleep for most of the time uh, so this is dedicated to be the like battery powered uh, device but of course it really so we th there are al already some built-in uh, profiles for uh, like devices which needs to uh 
provide some power consumption mechanisms, but it really depends on the particular application and particular uh, devices. Uh, Camille, can you take another one? Uh, okay, so uh, that was how would you design a border router uh, that can control various matter devices? Uh, would this be an embedded matter controller? So I actually am not sure uh, what is a uh, design that is mentioned here. So in, in matter, we have like like the, um, the topology that uh, that use the controller. So the matter device that is, uh, is used for, for invoking commands and, and controlling uh, another matter devices, but, but the border router uh, is a role uh, described on the network layer. So it is more like related to uh, to, for example, threat technology, it is not uh, like uh, defined by the matter. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it is possible to integrate uh, threat border router and and controller, uh, matter controller in the uh, in the one device. Uh, yeah, I have a hope that that is something uh, what was meant in this question. And uh, another question is, uh, was the commissioning using a uh, BLE or was it 15.4? Uh, How they play together in your example? So uh, I'm not uh, not sure what example you uh, actually mean. So the first two, uh, two demos were, uh, were uh, related to FRED. So the commissioning is done over Bluetooth LE. Uh, and then uh, after uh, establishing uh, the connection, validating the cert certificates, and etc. Uh, there is uh, IP uh, network uh, uh, credentials. The, they are uh, passed to the uh, accessory uh, from the controller, and then it is able to join uh, the IP network uh, and continue uh, next uh, stages of communication over IP. Uh, and in in two cases, it was FRED, and for the uh, template uh, demo uh, extended by Martin, it was uh, commissioning over Bluetooth LE plus uh, further communication over IP using Wi-Fi. Okay, another question. Uh, is there a detailed documentation on the Matter app creation and API used? Uh, so I would say that the best source uh, of the documentation for uh, such a development would be our uh, web pages with our documentation, which first of all describes the how the uh, up our applications and samples are are constructed, and also they can be uh, used to navigate to other sub pages which defines uh, the uh, the used functionalities of Matter itself. And we highly encourage uh, everyone to use our samples as uh, the skeletons for their applications, uh, because the, the API of Matter itself is, is used there. Uh, I'm not sure, however, if there is any uh, strict documentation of the API itself. It's more like the Matter specification and the open source uh, project together with some guides uh, also supported in the uh, GitHub. Another question, uh, are there any available routers which already supports Mother? Um, so speaking in terms of the commercial devices available on the market, uh, I'm not sure. So it, it's like really the, the fresh uh, case and the fresh release of the Mother. The first uh, release has been uh, published just, uh, just recently. Uh, so but if, if this question is regarding the thread border router, this is the open source project which can be used uh, almost out of the box uh, for the Raspberry Pi for the development purposes and for the uh, like real uh, applications, uh, it, we would need to ask uh, the end device vendors for that, I guess. Yeah, so there are some routers that are already starting to implement thread in the router itself. Uh, so I guess it'll just be yeah, a question of time uh, until those will support matter because they definitely have enough uh, computing power for it. Yeah. And I actually skipped one question, which is uh, regarding the uh, real-time data. 
uh, is the matter standard designed to transfer real-time data, for, exa for example, heart rate, from one device to another on the local matter network and or to the thread border router and Wi-Fi? Uh, so uh, actually, the it seems that for such a use case, the subscribe mechanism would uh, fit well in this kind of scenario. Uh, regarding the latencies uh, in threat networks, uh, it really depends on the network topology, but assuming that there are not many hoops between devices, we can assume that achieving uh, the latencies be below 100 milliseconds should be, should be feasible. And uh, in case uh, there is uh, uh, some streaming necessary, then of course the Wi-Fi would be better choice uh, to, uh, to send more extended data packets. Uh, so that's actually the, the cool thing uh, about Matter because it gives you the flexibility to configure your network so that it uses both the devices which require high throughput and uh, sleepy end devices like, like the, the used in thread networks. Okay, I can also try to answer one more question. Uh, what additional features should we expect in Matter 2.0? Uh, so first of all, uh, the Matter 1.1 uh, will be the next release uh, after 1.0. So maybe let's let's focus on, uh, focus on this one. Uh, and this release is planned to happen around uh, like spring next year. Uh, so uh, if it comes to the scope, uh, the discussions uh, uh, on the changes uh, and the full scope of this release are still discussed uh, uh, in the community. Uh, but mainly is it, it is going uh, to focus uh, on extending the, uh, the, um, the range of, uh, um, of supported device types uh, by, the, uh, by the matter specification, uh, just to enable more products to appear on the, on the market. Also, uh, there are plans to um, uh, to better support uh, sleepy end devices in Matter, uh, especially if it comes to the Wi-Fi. As for now, the threat solution uh, for sleepy end devices is uh, uh, is uh, a little bit more mature than for Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, so so full uh, scope is not defined yet. Uh, those are two. Uh, I would say areas that uh, I'm aware, aware of. Uh, okay, I'm not sure how, how much time do we have, but uh, answering another question, did you run chip tool in Android emulator? If so, what kind of hardware it, uh, it is required? So we were using the, uh, the chip tool running on the Linux machines, uh, Ubuntu 20 uh, to be more precise. And Camille used uh, the Android chip to running on the Android-driven uh, phone. And uh, speaking of the hardware required, so it can be like the, I would say, uh, any PC. Uh, but the important thing is that it, of course, needs to support the Wi-Fi uh, interface and uh, the 15.4 uh, radio interface, which can be uh, provided with the usage of our dongle and the rpc application so this is all well documented in our uh on our websites and by the way the docker can also be used to run the chip tool so this is like the yet another option okay um, then, uh, yes, in case uh, you were running late, uh, yes, recording will be available. If you signed up with your mail, you'll get a mail. It'll also be on the webinars.nordexamer.com on demand section. They'll also get the slides. So no worries if you were late. Um, then, uh, will Meta be an addition to native firmware on a component? Not exactly sure what the question is about, but there are already devices on the market that used to have a different firmware were updated and now support meta and of course they can for example have additional features with different ecosystems so that is still possible if that was your question and uh, the last one is more of a statement than a question so there seems to be a google wi-fi pro that uh, router that already has thread support so thank you for that input and I think if I didn't miss any question, 
Uh, I think we actually managed to answer everything. We're just 16 minutes over time. Uh, thank you everyone for attending and uh, see you on the next webinar.